internet, this is Jacob Clifford. In a macroeconomics class, you learn how we measure the economy by looking at unemployment, inflation, and gross domestic product. I've already made videos that cover all those concepts. So right now, let's take them and figure out what country has the worst economy. The first economies you might think of are in countries like Afghanistan, in Syria. Years of armed conflict and political instability has led to very little economic growth because there's no domestic or foreign investment. Clearly these economies are bad, but I don't think they're the worst. Syria had pretty strong economic growth before their civil war, and Afghanistan is sitting on over $3 trillion of untapped natural resources. So in theory, if there's peace and political stability, these economies could bounce back relatively quickly. Now, I'm not saying there's gonna be a Six Flags Kabul anytime soon. I'm just saying that war is not necessarily an economic death sentence. Many economies were able to bounce back after a war. For example, Germany and Japan after World War II, and more recently, Vietnam and Iraq. The point is we're not just looking for an economy that's terrible now, we're looking for one that's gonna be terrible 10, 20, or 40 years in the future. Okay, so maybe we should set aside the war-torn countries and look at specific economic indicators like unemployment. Here's a list of countries organized by unemployment. So obviously one of these with high unemployment is probably the worst economy in the world. But for our purposes, using unemployment is actually a little problematic. Just because people are working doesn't mean the economy is thriving. It depends on the value of the products they're producing. For example, a subsistence farmer will have a very low standard of living even if they are fully employed. And a country might have high unemployment even though their economy is sound. After all, worldwide unemployment has spiked because of COVID-19. The majority of the world's economies are in a recession, so just looking at unemployment alone will probably not tell us the world's worst economy. Okay, so maybe we should look at a different indicator like gross domestic product. This is a list of countries organized by GDP and on the very bottom is Tuvalu. Maybe that's the worst economy. They're only producing $49 million of goods and services. To put that in perspective, Americans spend more than 10 times that on Halloween costumes for their pets. It turns out that these economies aren't really that bad. They're just really small island nations with few resources and few people. Tuvalu's population is only 12,000 people. So a GDP of $49 million is actually pretty good. Different countries have different resources and populations. So we shouldn't look at just GDP. We should look at GDP per capita. Looking at the total GDP divided by the population gives us an idea of standard of living. And the bottom of the list we have Burundi. It's a small landlocked country in Sub-Saharan Africa that has very little private and public investment. Their economy is largely based on agriculture and over 65% of the population are living in poverty. So it's bad. I mean, really bad, but is it the worst? Yes, Burundi is poor and they've always been poor because they have a bad location and bad natural resources. But what if there was another country that had great location, great natural resources, and they were once rich, but now they're poor? I think that might be worse. The country I'm talking about is Venezuela. In 1950, Venezuela had the fourth highest GDP per capita in the world. And they had strong economic growth all the way up to the 1980s. They had some bad recessions. Then in 1999, they elected Hugo Chavez as the president. And for a while, things were going great. Venezuela has the world's largest oil reserves. When oil prices increased in the 2000s, the Chavez government had plenty of money. But instead of saving that money or investing it in physical or human capital, Chavez spent it on massive social programs. And to make things worse, he started taking private property and private businesses, something called expropriation. Esa casita que se ve ahí con dos balcones. Y ahí lo que están en unos negocios. Expropiese. Este edificio aquí, ¿cuál es? También es un edificio que tiene locales comerciales de propiedad privada. Eh, Expropiese, señor alcalde. Expropiese. Foreign and domestic private sector investment just stopped. I mean, why would you grow your business if there's a good chance the government's going to take it? Production in the private sector fell and Venezuela became entirely dependent on exporting oil and importing consumer goods. And disaster struck. Oil prices tumbled and the economy fell into a depression. I've spent four hours in line here to buy bread, to be able to eat because there's no food. I was in a line this morning from 5 a.m. and at 11 a.m. I couldn't buy anything because there was nothing left. And to make things worse, the government started printing money to pay for its debts, which led to hyperinflation. Venezuela was once the richest country in Latin America, and now nearly 90% of the population live in poverty and it's become the poster child on how not to run your economy. So is this it? Is this the worst economy in the world? 
Well, there's still one other country. It's a country with no reliable GDP or unemployment data, and it does have political stability. But its economy is so flawed that no amount of waiting it out is gonna help. It needs a complete structural overhaul. I am, of course, talking about North Korea. Established in 1948, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea has unintentionally become the world's best economic experiment. We have two identical countries. They have the same histories, the same cultures, until they split, and the only thing separating them is an economic system. North Korea chose a centrally planned economic system with very little private property and international trade. But South Korea chose a free market system that has private property and that has embraced globalization. And the numbers don't lie. The GDP per capita for North Korea is estimated around $1,300 for South Korea, it's around $30,000. Life in North Korea is bad. It has by far the worst economic freedom. North Koreans are not allowed to work, move, or travel without permission, and state-owned industries account for almost all of GDP. But does that make it the worst? Yes, the people in North Korea are repressed and the economy is terrible, but that's how it's always been. This is what they think life just is. But the people in Venezuela were once rich and now they're poor. Which one's worse, to be poor and miserable your whole life or to be once rich and then become poor and miserable? I don't know. And that's why I'm gonna leave it up to you in the comments. Let me know if you think North Korea or Venezuela or some other country has the worst economy. And if you're a student and you need more help in your macroeconomics class, take a look at my videos. Also, if you're a teacher, take a look at my economics worksheets. Make sure to like this video and let me know in the comments which economy is worse. Thanks for watching, till next time.